Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. I've got a couple of Henrys. You can see various bits of them up on the bench. And I've been trying to make one good one out of two, basically. I found one that has uh, the cable was just pulled off it. I'll show you this. So I've cleaned the cables back, but there's no cable on the reel. So uh, I was told this one was broken. Uh, it seems to work fine, except that the cable was cut. And further down here then, I have the motor body and the rest of this one but I've put a reel from a different one that has a broken high-low switch or broken high-low uh, control board so let's have a look at what I've got here so this is a oscilloscope and it's doing nothing at the moment it's just got uh, a blank trace coming across there at around zero I've got a 10 a 10x probe here connected to the output from the control from the little PCB if you can see oh, it's gone again Let's put that on there so the red PCB is in there there's a 10x probe that won't stay hooked on there we go I've got the switches down here let's move that back up again I've got the switches over here on off and high low they do a bit of a something like this. So the green switch, the on off switch is a double pole, double throw, I think. And uh, it jumps across live to live, neutral to neutral and goes straight to the PCB. The PCB then has the capacity of soft starting and running it at, I think, 800 watts out of 1200, I think, or 1000 watts out of 1200, something like that. But when you latch this part of the PCB but when you latch this part of the PCB over here with this little red switch this is the red switch some magic happens in here and it just comes on full so I thought I'd take a look at what's happening on the oscilloscope to see if I can see the the wave of the electricity so we'll start it up and I'll put it on high to show you the sine wave that's going through it and then I'll put it back on to low so that you can see how how it's what it's doing i've got an oscilloscope here this is an old isotech isr620 it was uh i think rs components did the same thing under a different name it might be called rs it's a cheap old oscilloscope and so it's a bit fiddly and it's not great for tuning it in to get the wave to stay in the same position because i'm doing mains electricity through the scope i've got the mains coming through an isolation transformer so this is the same as a 110 transformer in terms of being an isolation transformer, except it's 220 in and 220 out. So this just goes to the plug on the wall, and this plug is the one from the vacuum cleaner. So it's live. The switch is live. Let's take a look here. If we can see voltage, you can see that without causing fireworks, hopefully. That's what we're getting in there. Somehow from that transformer it's given us 257 volts. The mains is about 243 I think coming in here. So the mains is quite a high mains. But uh, somehow it steps up slightly through this isolation transformer. So then. What I can do as well is once it's on I can measure the power coming directly to the motor. Uh, the power, the voltage coming to the motor. So let's turn it on and watch the screen over here. And this will be the low speed setting because that's what it begins on. So it's clearer. So it's clearer at the beginning and then it goes a bit hairy. So I've just drawn it out here on the bottom, but that's what it looks like to me. So I'm not sure if it's chopping these bits out of the sine wave. So if this was a sine wave, and it's chopping those bits out, maybe that's what's happening. But let's uh, put it onto the high setting now.
So tidying it up a bit there, I think this is what it's doing. So that's your typical sine wave. It seems to be chopping out this bit and chopping out this bit. And that makes sense, I think that's just what it does. I've seen it in books before and I kind of understand what it's doing. It's turning on and off the electricity very quickly because this is happening each one of these cycles. So trough to trough, from here to here, there it is. So that's one cycle. Took me a while to get that. So what it's doing is twice in one cycle, it's chopping the electricity. So that's happening at 100 times a second then. If it's 50 hertz electricity, it's doing two chops per second. So that's, that's what it is. The noise, the extra vibration is just coming from the fact that there's a motor also attached to the electricity. I think if I was to put a light bulb on or something instead, a, sim a simpler load, it might not uh, it might not be so so shaky that's what's happening there with the Henry I've just basically this is just me playing with the oscilloscope because I didn't do that before uh, last thing to do is to check the voltage on the multimeter as we go so let's turn it on again and this is the low speed So if I recall, it was saying 225 on low and 215 on high, which doesn't make any sense unless there was some current thing going on as well. But I think it's because the multimeter can't read that current that's chopped. It can't read the voltage when it's chopped off like that. Okay, so the next thing I want to check is the one with the broken PCB. So the last, it might be a broken PCB or it might be a broken switch actually. The last one had a red board, this one has a green board. You can see this without me touching any of the terminals, although I think they're not live at the moment. So there's the PCB. I've got it on. I've got the 10x probe connected to the motor output from the board. So the brown and the blue just come in directly from the on-off switch. The black is a trigger from the high-low switch. But this one, it could be that the trigger is broken. In which case, it might be possible to trigger it using a piece of cable. I can give that a go as well. But in the first instance, let's just turn it on and see what's happening on the oscilloscope. So it was just giving us a noisy sine wave, which is what we would expect. But typically when these things come on, they come on in the low position if this board is working. And the low position did the chopped wave. So obviously it's not chopping it. So presumably actually the board is gone in this case. Um, whenever I turn it on, I don't know if we'll see this here. So whenever I turned it on there, the light was flickering. It's not flickering, it's, it's persistent, but it's just the way the camera picks it up. The same as with the oscilloscope screen. It just picks it up with a flicker because of the frequency of the electricity and the frequency of the the frames per second, the frame rate on the camera. I think the switch is working because the light's coming on, but I suspect that the board is broken because it's not chopping it straight away. So let's switch everything off and plug everything out. Here's my transformer plug. So what I've done then is I've ordered one of these, what I think is a little triac. It's a T1235H-6G. Uh, they're about three quid on the internet. I'll post a link in the description below to one of these, um, but I don't know yet if that's going to fix the board. It's a surface mount component, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to get that off with the devices that I have, but all I can do is try. I think it's an interesting little board. I think it's hard to see the circuit on it because it's printed in the way it's printed. I think this here is all heatsink, even though it's part of the board. 
I think that works because it's constantly in a strong flow of air, so it doesn't need a massive heatsink. But I have no way of testing this switch. In fact, I don't know if I, I, th I think pretty sure, well, I'm pretty sure the board is dead, but these boards are quite expensive. They're about 20 quid. And I don't even know if that, that might be second hand. Whereas a, a new uh, Triac is, about, like I said, three quid. So I'll give that a go in another video and you can check it out. If you want to know, if you want to know more about why I'm using this isolation transformer, I would suggest you check out uh, John Ward's, JW's video on isolation transformers. I'll put a card in here and a link in the description below. Uh, if you want to support this channel, check out my Amazon shop. There's things in there you can buy and you can buy anything on Amazon. Any questions or comments on what I've done, especially comments, leave them below. Because I've struggled to find any information about these Henry PCBs on the internet. Uh, so it would be really useful if you know a bit about them just to leave a comment below telling us a bit about them or post a link to something on the internet that's got more information on them. Meanwhile, I'm going to keep this broken one separate, put the carousel onto the working one and put a Henry back together. Thanks for watching. See you later.